story of Pikmin 4 is a simple one, but it still can be confusing to some people that didn't play past games, and they might not understand where the story is going, especially after the events of Pikmin 1, 2, and 3, and might not even understand the ending and what it meant for the overall story. Well, today I'm here to explain the entire story, the ending and extra ending, and even prelogue to the game, and wrap it up in a nice little bow for you guys to understand completely. But real quick before we get started, if this gave you a lot of brand new information that you didn't know, make sure you leave a like and subscribe as a lot of you watching this video right now are not yet subscribed to the channel. It'll only take a quick second so thank you so much for those of you that have been supportive and have liked and subscribed already. But let's jump into the story in the world of Pikmin 4. The story starts off with Alamar, and actually the post-game to Pikmin 4 actually tells the story of the pre-game, of how this all came to be. Alamar crash lands on the planet PNF 404, and has to work with a space dog named Moss that he eventually finds in the Pikmin in order to help find and collect the pieces of his ship, known as the SS Dolphin. Now, planet PNF-404 is believed to be Earth in the future once human life is nowhere to be found, and it's kind of a wrecked planet full of crazy indigenous wildlife now, and still covered in oxygen, and none of the explorers from any of the planets in this game, Alamar included, can breathe this oxygen, so their suits actually filter this out in order for them to stay alive. But Alamar's filter is about to run out in 15 days, meaning at 15 days, if he did not collect all of his ship parts and can't leave the planet, it, then he will die because his life support will cease to exist. Once he finds his interstellar radio, he sends out a distress signal all throughout space in order to reach the rescue corps to come rescue him. But many other explorers from many different planets all around the galaxy pick up this signal and travel to PNF 404 for one reason or another. But eventually, Alvar finds all of his ship parts anyways thanks to the Pikmin and his new buddy Moss and is able to leave the planet until he realizes at the last second that Moss actually has snuck in on board. And now that he's on the ship, was acting kind of strange, as if he had some type of sickness, so Alamar immediately turned around in order to return him to the planet, and then at the last second, his life support ran out and he actually passed out. Now, I don't really understand how the life support works because honestly, he should be dead at this point. And you can still tell that he's breathing when the Pikmin are carrying him. So maybe there's still a little bit of leftover filtration before it completely runs out, but the Pikmin carry him to their onion and grow him into a leafling. Now this actually saves his life, allowing him to breathe oxygen now in the air, but in turn, it kind of corrupts his body as a type of poison and messes with his mind a bit. Now that signal still reached a lot of other explorers out there. In fact, over 45 different explorers ventured off into this planet to come check it out, and they all crash landed. Every single one of them, including the rescue squad, sent here to find Alamar. So you, the brand new recruit, are sent in its place to go rescue the rescue squad. So that way, the entire rescue squad can then go out and help to find Alamar and the other castaways. So you fly in with your ship, the SS Beagle, to meet up with the SS Shepherd. yes, both named after dogs, reasonably for this game, but you are to find the entire crew, which consists of Colin, the comms operator, Shepard, the captain, Russ, the material engineer slash inventor, Dingo, the ranger, Yanni, the doctor, and Bernard, the pilot. You are tasked with finding the whereabouts of Alamar and other stranded explorers over the four different areas with the help of Ochi, a space dog coming from the Shepherd lineage, which is the leader of the group, and from the planet Gaia. Now, as you voyage over the four areas, Sun Speckled Terrace, Blossoming Arcadia, Serene Shores, and Heroes Hideaway, you'll also collect special objects to use as Sparkleum in order to extend the range of your radar to find even more castaways and even more areas on this globe, and the whereabouts of Olimar and Moss that the crew doesn't find out until the very end of the game because they can't tell that that leafling is Olimar, which I don't understand. But during your venture, you'll constantly have to battle Alamar and Moss because they've been actually hiding in different caverns, taking castaways and converting them into leaflings. So you have to catch these castaways and bring them back to base until you can figure out a way to heal them. But once again, tracking down this red leafling. But once you find these leaflings, you'll notice they are all obsessed with the art of Dandori, which just means completing tasks efficiently and effectively, which is ultimately the entire series of Pikmin. Literally, you can just rename Pikmin Dandori then, because that's all it is. It's about using your Pikmin in order to find objects very fast, but also in the smart way by sending them off in different groups. So yeah, don't get confused by the word Dandori, it simply just is Pikmin at its core. 
And once you bring all these castaways slash leaflings back to the ship, you'll have to turn them back into explorers again. And the only way to do so is to go out at night with the help of the Dr. Yanni in order to collect glow sap that only appears at night from luminals, which are the home of the brand new glow pigment. You will have to go on night missions to protect these luminals from all the creatures of the night, which only get activated when they see the glow of these glow pigment. Which is really weird, but they do explain in game, kind of, that the only reason that they glow is to bring enemies to them because they like the excitement and adventure, which just doesn't make sense. You would think the glow pigment would just never glow and they would never be hunted. But you know what? That's the way Nintendo likes to tell stories. But after the night ends, you will successfully get a big glob of glow sap that comes out of the luminal for protecting it throughout the night. And you can bring that back home in order to turn into a medicine to cure the leaflings and find out exactly who these different explorers are, which comes from a multitude of different planets. Now I plan on making a video diving into each and every single planet and where the explorers actually come from and kind of talk about what their planets are probably like. So if you want to see a big blowout video like that, please make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications because that will be coming very soon. But back into the story. Eventually, you and the Rescue Corps will find and trap Olimar at Hero's Hideaway, which is a giant modern house that is still somehow in perfect mint condition. Now, you'll also notice lots of the areas in the game seem to be unaffected by any type of apocalyptic event. There's lots of backyards and playsets, swings and slides that are in perfect condition, as if humans just straight up vanished, which makes me think that this new retelling of the series might actually result in a recent apocalypse that happened just prior to the events of Pikmin 4, but we'll get into that later on. After finding Olimar's hideout within a secret safe and beating him once again at a Dandori challenge, you'll take him back to the ship in order to heal him, but Moss will run away somewhere which we'll find out later on where he'll end up. Alamar and the entire rescue corps jump into the ship in order to take off, which is very weird considering the fact that they don't even think about rescuing everybody else. They're known as the rescue corps. So yeah, that's, that's a little weird, but they all jump into the rocket to head away, but something's wrong. Ochi starts to have a sort of panic attack very similar to Moss, and Olimar notices this and demands that they return right away. On the ground, Olimar states that Ochi's new grown leaf tail might be trying to tie him to the planet now, and he would have to be cured before attempting to leave, but one problem, the glow sap cure does not work on him. The crew then decides they need to help find a famous veterinarian that has also crash landed on the planet from planet Kopai, which is where all the Pikmin 3 explorers were from as well. Now, the story seems to be a retelling of the entire franchise, almost erasing everything that happened within Pikmin 1, 2, and 3, and I think even Hey Pikmin at this point is kind of retconned. But with that said, these three explorers from Kopai look exactly like different versions of the ones we got from Pikmin 3 from that very same planet with Alf, Brittany, and Charlie. And the fact that they're wearing these same colored spacesuits and that they're not in this game when everyone else is does make me wonder if they've been replaced by these new astronauts as well, which is kind of sad if that's the case, that they just completely erased these three characters from Pikmin 3. Once Nell the veterinarian is saved, she states how they will need cells from a non-leafling dog in order for the cure to work. So you venture off to two more locations, Giant's Hearth and Primordial Thicket, in order to chase down Moss, who is now controlled by Louie from Hakotate Freight for some reason. Now, Louie actually comes from the past Pikmin games as well as Alamar's partner from Hakotate, where he has an extreme appetite and is definitely a troublemaker. And as you can see in this game, he is definitely still troublemaking. Now, for some reason, he's actually dragging explorers the same way Leafling Alamar did and trying to convert them into Leaflings, although the new members of Kopai aren't transforming for some reason. And it's because they actually have already ingested some of that glow sap because they said it was pretty tasty. So with that already in their system, this is not affecting them whatsoever. So they are perfectly safe from being turned into Leaflings. Now, why is Louis doing this? It's really unknown. He's not necessarily an evil guy. He just is like a man-child, and he's trying to have fun and mess around, but he doesn't realize the stuff that he's doing. And I guess that's just his general purpose, is just to ride around on a dog and have a good time. But after you defeat him in the last Dandori battle, Moss will actually be left alone as Louis runs away in order to go find a 
replacement dog. But Moss then returns to the crew and returns to Alamar, where they're all back at home ship now. Nell then tells the entire crew once again that they need a non-leafling dog as Moss didn't work because he already has a leaf on his tail, which means his DNA is already corrupted. So they would have to find DNA from another space dog, which they've heard rumblings and apparently Nell has seen a giant fuzzy space dog somewhere out there and that Louie might be the one that's trying to tame it now. You then head back to the primordial thicket for one last cave expedition, which takes you to the cavern for a king, which takes you through multiple different floors filled with the most vile and dangerous creatures throughout the entire game. But finally making your way down to the bottom, you'll come across Louie and his new tame dog, the Ancient Sire Hound, a giant furry pup, where you will enter a giant battle against the creature. This hound acts exactly like Oshi and Moss, but a giant version, where he will rush you and also jump up in the air and try to crush you when he lands. But your job is to get Pikmin on his tail in order to weigh it down and knock it over in order to attack its stomach. But this hound actually has tons of supernatural abilities. It can imbue itself and its status effects into ice, fire, and electricity attacks, which can be deadly for your Pikmin that don't correspond to that color. But the last status effect we see is a weird one. He starts flying in the air with his ears and glows a neon green that's pulsating from his fur. And he's able to shoot out these red, gastrous projectiles that will kill even the poison Pikmin and yes, even your glow Pikmin if they touch it. Which is something that we don't see any Pikmin have this special effect. So at first I thought it was poison, but that doesn't seem to be the case. The only other enemy in the game that has attacks at this level is the Smoky Prog, which resonates with another green color and that red toxic goo that spills from beneath him when he walks and also he can shoot out of his mouth. Thanks to the in-game notes, we know that Smoky Prog's hatch out of Mamuta eggs and seem to be some type of mutated version of the Mamuta, which is very interesting. And the word mutation is something that stuck with me with the ancient sire hound. Because what if this new ability is actually from a mutation due to something that's happened above ground? Maybe one of the things that happened during this apocalypse of the world was a nuclear attack that actually corrupted this poor pup. And this mutation was able to give it the ability to not only fly, but also change its various different status effects. So maybe this creature altogether was the result of a nuclear fallout, which is very sad if true, and the fact that it's out here alone just makes you care for it even more. After you defeat the Hound, he will actually run off and drop his collar on the ground. Thankfully, the DNA can be extracted from the collar and used as a cure, and it finally works on OG, but not on Moss. That is because Moss is actually from PNF 404 and was born and raised there, so the cure just simply doesn't work on him. But you're also able to grab Louie, which he should have just been left behind at this point, and rescue him as well. So the crew is now finally to take off and they leave Moss behind to now be the new protector of the Pikmin, which is really cute because the Pikmin were normally always left behind when Olimar would leave. But now they have their own little protector in the form of Moss and also the ancient Sirehound, which comes back out of hiding and seems to follow them in tow, which is a pretty big protector, let me tell you that. But that's the end of the story as we know it from Pikmin 4. But there's still a lot of questions on the table that have not been answered. One of those questions is why does everyone keep crash landing on this planet? Is there something with the atmosphere thanks to the nuclear fallout or something that's happened with the apocalypse down there that's just causing interference into the ships that enter its atmosphere? It's unsure of, but there's already theories and stuff that the other games charted to work out, but it does seem like Pikmin 4 is erasing those theories or erasing everything that they started to conjure up. So yeah, Pikmin 4 might be starting an original story and maybe eventually we'll get an explanation as to why all these ships are crash landing here because every single ship crash landed here from all the explorer castaways in this game. Also, once again, there's no sign of a nuclear fallout. There's no explosions, there's no giant debris everywhere or rocket shells or any type of bombs anywhere on this entire globe. In fact, everything is in perfect condition, if anything. I feel like the worst thing that could possibly happen was maybe some overgrown trees and some grass, but besides that, the houses are in shape. You can even see the backyards of lots of houses still looking pretty good. The toys and playsets left behind by children are not even rusted, let alone scratched. So 
what happened here? I mean, generally, it feels like the human race just up and vanished. And, like, did aliens come and take them or something? Or maybe the humans are still alive somewhere, lying underneath in some bunkers. Maybe there was a nuclear fallout, and lots of the locations in this game for Pikmin 4 don't take place anywhere near those areas where the missiles and bombs went off. But maybe thanks to the nuclear fallout, yes, it's in the air, and it's poisonous. So maybe the human race took refuge underground somewhere. In the same vein as Splatoon 3 with Alterna, where it was a safe haven for the rest of the human race before they inevitably killed themselves off as well. But we can also dig deeper into the ancient sire hound, because apparently it is the reason why there are space dogs anyways, which I thought was a little weird, because apparently they're all descendants of him. Now, I don't know how he was able to have descendants and offspring anywhere off planet. That doesn't really make sense. Maybe other explorers came here and maybe some of his offspring were taken away from this planet before they actually grew a leaf tail. I don't know, and it's also begging the question is how are some of these pups able to grow a leaf tail like moss that was born here? It's also hard to tell considering the fact that the ancient sire hound does not have a leaf tail. But it does seem to be something within the earth atmosphere that's giving these hounds these tails. I don't know what it is, but after a while, Ochi does develop the leaf tail after not having it for a while while exploring on the earth for a very long time in the beginning of the game. So once again, being my theory that there's something in the air, maybe some type of toxic waste or some type of nuclear fallout still that's transforming some of these creatures into the abominations that they are and also giving some of these pups their mutated tails. Yeah, I guess maybe after the sire hound had some pups, some of the explorers came to this world and actually took some of these pups home that didn't have leaf tails and then boom, all over the galaxy you have space pups. But the sire hound is based off of a shih tzu puppy. This also could be the last surviving dog as it somehow seems to have stayed alive for a long time due to all of its fur that's overgrown and its messy body. Is he the last of the human race or the last thing to represent the human race? Maybe he was left out of some type of shelter or all the humans died but he was able to survive somehow and got away. Now he roams the area alone which is really sad because clearly he belonged to somebody as he still had the collar on him. Something else interesting is that only him and the Water Wraith are the only enemies in the series to have sequential health meters for its different phases. Now I just thought it was pretty weird that the coincidence was with this is that the Water Wraith almost is a humanoid form and there's a whole theory on what that creature is and it apparently is a creature from another dimension that's trapped in between dimensions. So yeah, we're gonna have to dive into that one on its own separate video. That is the new and reimagined story of Pikmin 4, and it seems like the dev team is actually moving away from Pikmin's 1, 2, and 3 and coming up with a new story to kind of tie into a future timeline. So let me know in the comments down below if I missed any important details that you would like included. Also, let me know your theories about what's going on with Earth and why everything seems like it's still intact and the theories with the ancient Sire Hound. But thank you so much for tuning in. If you love this video and want to see more videos like this in the future, which I have tons planned, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Pikmin 4 and Pikmin in general. I will be going through different enemies and creatures and kind of talking about the history and lore behind them. And like I said, visiting each and every single planet from this game and talking about the explorers that come from each one. But thank you so much for tuning in, and like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.